this is my scissor arm mechanism made in the uh, Asari. And the idea with this is that you've got some sort of uh, one of these scissor mechanisms that you might use in something like a bathroom mirror. And each one of your struts is going to remain the same length. And as you move up and down these elements here and here, the whole thing is going to extend. And that's just what it does. So if I can move my base points around, you can see that my whole arm extends. And I can bring it pretty far down and get the thing to go way out. I can either do it numerically, and if I do it really far, then it breaks. But that's the same way that it would happen if you did it with a real scissor. Arm. Get it way up, it'll we'll get really nice and contracted like that. And I think we can walk through the construction process for this uh, in a couple of easy steps. But just a couple other things to show you about it. It's hosted, it's geometry that you can use to create other elements from. Uh, if you want to create geometry on top of it, you can post points on it and do anything else that you might want to do with regular geometry. So it's based on this adaptive component, which is a three-pick family. And it has in it a bunch of other sort of tools that I've made, one of which is a, an arc, which creates a, a, a fixed length arc that happens within the plane that I want the arm to travel in. And then the other element is this fixed length strut right here that is always going to be the same length no matter what happens. So basically combining these pieces along with a fixed length circle is going to be uh, the three pieces that you're going to need that are sort of non-native geometry in order to make this family. And I'm just going to delete all of this and we'll start it from scratch. So to begin with, you need to have, you need to define a plane essentially, and because you want your your geometry to exist on one planar surface, so I'm going to create that plane by making three points, three points to find a plane, one, two, three, like that, and I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to make them adaptive components, and move this down a little bit closer. And what I need to do is I need to create a line that's going to move perpendicularly out from these two points along that plane. So I'm going to make a spline by points between them. And just to make it easier to see, I'm going to make those a better reference line. And I'm going to want to point from the midpoint of this perpendicularly out, out into infinity, if, but uh, infinity is hard to reach. So we're going to do just a large circle. So I've got a circle of a fixed radius here, which is another adaptive component family that I've made. I'm just going to open it up to show you. Um, it's similar to another post that I did about doing a, an arc that's constrained to three points. But this is just an arc, a circle that's constrained uh, to uh, a certain distance and to a certain plane. And so I'm going to take my arc with fixed radius, and I'm going to do 1.1, 1.2, and 0.3. And all those three points are doing is really establishing the plane for that thing to live on. So I'm going to do another one here, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3. And I've changed uh, the object settings so that you can get these sort of faded outlines, because this is just going to be underlay geometry that I don't want to really see all that much. I'm going to host a point on it, and I'm going to host that point by the intersection with the other circle. And what this is going to allow me to do is to have a line in space from here to here that my arm is going to travel along. And I'm just going to connect those by spline by point, and I'm going to also make that into a reference line. There we go. So now I've got my perpendicular line through space that can serve as the pivot point for my scissor arm. The next tool I've got here is my arc by fixed radius. So the idea with this guy is if I just place it down on the reference level, um, one pick, two pick, three picks. And what this thing has is it has a, a defined radius 
right now I have it defined at 10 feet over here in the properties. I can change that to you know, 15, whatever I want it to be. Um, but for this one, I actually want to have something that is just a 10 foot radius. So that's a radius from this point out to here. And that's going to be the fulcrum point for the first arm of my strut. And I can just take that fixed radius arc and I can go one pick, two pick. And I'm going to do out here because I want it to stay inside this plane. And again, I've just changed the object styles just so that they read a little bit differently from the big heavy geometry of the black lines that are going to be the ones that I'm going to want to use in the end. And finally, I've got, uh, and again, this is, um, this is another adaptive component that is uh, a loaded family. If I just open it up for edit here, you can see this looks similar to the other one that I made, except um, this does not have a flexible radius depending on how many picks I do. This is going to always say the same numerical radius and that's defined by a parameter here. And all these families are going to be on the website, so you can check them out and dissect them if you want. And then finally, my last one in my bag of tricks here of loaded families is the strut. And the strut is another loaded family, and it's fairly simple. All it does is um, I have two picks, one, two, and uh, posted on the uh, reference line that is between those two, there's a reference line that's between these two points. I've just drawn a simple line, and that line has a parameter on it that has a fixed length, or it has a parameterized length, so I can, I can change what that length is numerically, but from my picks, it's going to always be the same length. I think I have it set at half of this arc, which is, 20, which is uh, 10 feet. So my, no matter where I pick with this guy, I'm always going to have a... 20 foot line. And that's important for my strut, uh, for my arm, because it always needs to be the same length. So now that I've got all my pieces, I can take my strut and I can click on the anchor point. And I can click now on the arc that it's going to be swinging along. Now, I don't want it to be out there. I want it to actually be along this line at the intersection between the arc and that perpendicular line. So if I pick that point, I can post it by intersection here. And now I've got a point that's always going to pivot right there. So if I stretch this guy up, you can see that the arc stays the same length, but the angle of this guy is going to be changing because that arc is going to intersect that perpendicular line at different places. So now I actually have the whole anchor that I need in order to build my entire scissor arm. It looks like I made my line here a little bit short because I'm going to want to do a couple of oscillations, I guess, of this arm. So I'm going to take this circle, and uh, this fixed size circle has a, has a set radius. So I'm just going to increase that radius to, let's say, 50, just to give myself a little bit more space. See, everything pops out, and uh, I still get my perpendicular line. So now I can just start walking through with my uh, fixed, uh, my arc by fixed radius, and I can attach that to the end of my strut. One, two, three, and then I get my arc again. So then I can go and I can get my strut, and I can go from here to here, and that takes that point and it has to by intersection again. And I guess I'll do one more. I think I can fit it in there. Arc by fixed radius, end point, and then the two points that define it. Yeah, it looks like it might actually be a little bit too big here. Let me just make this a little bit more convenient to put together. I'm just tightening up my arm a little bit so that I can place this guy. So I get my arc by fixed radius. I go click, 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 and then I have one more intersection point to put my strut against. So I click the strut, and I host it on that arc, and then I host it at the intersection of that arc with my perpendicular line. And so now I've got one half of my flexible arm. I can test it out here a little bit. 
And it's sensitive because, you know, if you move outside of that arc, it's going to break, which is appropriate for one of these arms. There's only so far that you can move them. So I'm going to take my strut from my bottom half now. And now this part's easy. Now I can just go click. And I've already got a point there because that's one of the adaptive component points. I'll snap to that. Snap. Snap. And there's my arm. So now I can flex it around a little bit. See how it lines out. I don't really care about that. And you can just see the flex. Then when you load it back into your project environment, you turn on some of my hidden geometry here, which are just levels and reference planes. I can go and I can just place this in the project. I can just place it uh, freely without having it hosted on anything. So I've got my one pick, two pick, three pick. And I can flex it like this. Oh, one other aspect that I did forget to mention is that um, with this family, I've made all of these points vertical on placement which is uh, an orientation setting. I oh, know, I didn't even bother to, yeah. So in the, in the other family, select these three points, and you go vertical and family. And what vertical and family allows it to do is that when it's hosted on this line, it's going to stand up straight. Anyway, uh, I hope that was reasonably comprehensible. And I hope you can try this out and have a little fun with it.